recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Time for another journey into the software jungle. There's a hundred different companies I look at. Maybe I can only invest and trade in six to a dozen at a time, but you should have many of these on your radar because this is where the economy is going. Software is obviously on fire. It's leading the market right now. Uh, it's eating the world, as, as uh, Mark Andreessen taught us many years ago, uh, and it's still eating the world. And there's a, uh, when I talked about this last time, I said, the reason that you can have all these companies trading at 10 times sales, 20 times sales, uh, and the market investors are eating them up is because there's infinite variations of software. You know, it's not like a physical product. So, and companies and customers can find different software that speaks to their business and their use cases. So, yeah, many companies are doing the same things, uh, but they have different customers for different reasons. Uh, we're going to look at a handful today, try and understand their business models a little bit, and also look at some unique things for the, you know, the, the SaaS model, software as a service, relies on some type of subscription model. Uh, so we'll break that down with a couple different companies. First, uh, go to my screen here and let's talk about what's the difference between SaaS, PaaS, and IAAS. Uh, software as a service, obviously. P is platform as a service, and I is infrastructure as a service. Uh, great article here from uh, BMC Software, uh, the blog by Stephen Watts uh, from a couple years ago. Uh, just some common examples, software as a service, Google Apps, Dropbox, Salesforce, uh, Cisco WebEx, GoToMeeting, so th those platforms. But uh, in, in, I think Microsoft Office should be in there too because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a containerized product, right? You don't... You don't do anything. It's, it's not open source. You, Microsoft Office lets you use their software as a service. Um, platform as a service. Uh, few har harder to drill here, but uh, Google App Engine, uh, Windows Azure. So I would also include, I'm going to talk about Wix, the, uh, the website platform, and I'm going to call that platform as a service. It might also be software as a service because uh, they're giving you they're they're giving you web hosting, and then they're also giving you tools. So you know many companies are uh, crossover here. And then uh, IAAS infrastructure as a service, uh, Amazon Web Services, some Cisco stuff, more Microsoft Azure, um, Google. So and many many of these things are crossover. You can look uh, he's got another great chart here. Summary of key differences. Um, you know, whether something is providing applications, data, virtualization, servers, storage, networking. Uh, the orange here is where you, uh, it's, somebody manages it for you. So, you know, that's why I put Microsoft Office in this category because you just use the tool um, and you're renting it on some, you know, uh, yearly basis or whatever. Um, and then crossing over here into the blue is stuff that you manage. Uh, and th this would get into more custom applications too. Okay, so uh, last night for my Taser subscribers, um, I did a sort of a deeper dive on Zuora and Wix uh, because two subscription-based software as a service companies um, doing different things. Uh, you know, Wix, we talked about the web website hosting and website builder. Uh, Zuora helps companies transfer transform to a subscription model. Uh, and, and, you know, you're hearing crazy stuff now where people could have clothes as a subscription, obviously cars uh, as a subscription service, um, you, you know, you name it. Uh, Zuora wants the whole world to transform to a subscription-based model for what they sell and, and what we use as consumers. Why own it when you can just rent it for a day, a month, a year? All right, so take a look at my screen here. This is the commentary I did last night for Taser subscribers. Uh, Zuora, SaaS accounting jujitsu. And that's because I discovered something uh, in the Wix model that I thought was pretty unique. Um, so uh, uh, one thing I want to show you here. If you want to learn more about uh, Zuora, great article last week from Robert DeFrancisco at Forbes. Zuora champions the expansion of the subscription economy. So he kind of goes over the Zora model a little bit. Um, uh, good stuff there. But back to 
Let's uh, back to uh, we want to talk about Wix, right? OK, so what I discovered in the Wix model is that let me explain this. So picture you go to Wix and you want to build a website and they're going to host it and you want to use their tools. So you pay them up front and you could pay them on a monthly basis or you could you get the special deal. You pay them for the whole year. Um, and you, you know, you get a, a better deal. They collect that money with your credit card today, but they can't bill it. They can't book it as revenue until time passes. So they are, either do it on some incremental basis, or maybe every quarter they get to book uh, a portion of it. Um, and so that's the difference between collections and revenue. And so, uh, take a look at my screen here again. Um, I wrote about Wix recently as the bear of the day because their earnings estimates fell off, and uh, so they became a Zach's number five rank. But uh, for the last quarter, um, collections exceeded revenue by 15%. Collections were just over 200 million. Revenue was 174 million, and the same pattern existed in the uh, year ago quarter. Collections were uh, nearly 169 million versus revenue of 100. And We'll call it 138. So, you know, that's where I dove into this and said, okay, what's going on here? Why does Wix have to call out these collections versus revenue? Because their revenue is is deferred, and there are accounting rules that uh, that apply to this. I don't know if the new uh, ASC 606 rule specifically applies to Wix, but I know it applies to Zora. So, um, let's take another. Let's take a closer look at it, Zora. Uh, here's a note from Jeffries uh, back in April. Um, they're the biggest bull on the street on Zuora. And I, uh, in full disclosure, I own it. Um, they had to update their model for the ASC uh, 606 accounting rule change. Uh, but they have a $35 price target on it because they think that Zuora will grow at a rate of at least 25 to 30% over the next five to 10 years on the back of the subscription economy. And that's why they have a $35 price target. Uh, recently, uh, Zuora uh, published this report, the sub subscription economy grows more than 300% in the last seven years. Um, so that might be something to take a look at. Let's take a look at Zuora's actual numbers. Uh, $2.4 billion company, gonna do uh, 290 million in revenues this year. So, you know, trading under 10 times sales um, at almost 24% growth, growing, projected to grow. There's your, your, your Jeffrey's number, 25% to 365 million next year. Not profitable yet, though. Okay. So, talked about the Wix model. Um, I'm actually short Wix, I should mention that. Uh, it, you know, it's near all time highs. And it is a Zach's number five rank. Estimates are coming down. Uh, they're going through some growth challenges. They are investing in better customer support. Uh, they've had some problems there. And they're also going, Wix is going into the professional market. That's where they're trying to sell to the professional website designer who has a lot of clients and businesses uh, instead of just each individual small business get an, uh, or the, uh, the marketing agency. So that's the professional market, the professional website builder, the professional marketing agency who could have dozens of clients and small businesses, and then they will provide Wix services to them. So that, that could be a huge growth driver for Wix, uh, you know, years out. I'm just short the stock for a short-term trade. All right, so we talked about Wix. Now let's talk about um, another big software winner that uh, you probably know, and that is Atlassian, uh, stock symbol Team. They've got an investor deck. You go to their uh, investor relations page. They've got a, a presentation they did. They do one for every quarter, but this, and I don't know if they update the same deck, but this deck has 155 slides in it. So there's a lot to learn about the Atlassian uh, business. Um, just, I'll give you a quick summary here. They provide uh, productivity tools for businesses. So you may have heard of Slack. Slack is an app um, where team members can communicate about projects, about ongoing stuff. So it's, you know, it's uh, instant messaging within a small work group. 
um, team has, uh, or rather Atlassian, sometimes I'll call it team, has uh, similar uh, business productivity tools, and they're actually partners. Uh, by the way, Slack was going to go public. They decided to do um, you know, a direct listing of their share, so it's, it's still a, a, in a manner of going public, and uh, so they, ch they changed their, their ticker symbol from, I think it was SK, to uh, work. And Atlassian and Slack are partners together. Their ticker symbols, their stock symbols are team work. Um, let's take a look at my screen here of the, uh, the Atlassian investor deck. So you may have heard of Jira. Jira is another uh, productivity communication tool, Trello, Confluence. So in this slide deck, they, uh, Atlassian shows how they help businesses integrate these tools. Um, so they do stuff with Walmart, Lufthansa. I showed you HubSpot. Um, one more thing I want to show. Oh, uh, they work with Ulta, The Telegraph, Paper, and App Dynamics. Uh, App Dynamics. I thought uh, Cisco bought them. Maybe maybe they're still a standalone company with Cisco. Okay, so that's that is Atlassian. Um, I am also short that stock just for a short-term trade. Uh, new all-time highs became a Zach's number rank. Zach's number five rank, which means earnings estimates are going down. Uh, Wall Street analysts got ahead of themselves. After the most recent quarter, they realized they had to pull back on uh, their growth projections. So just a short-term trade there. Team is, uh, team I think is trading about 10 times sales. Um, and Wix was about eight times sales. I think Zoro is about nine times sales. So they're not terribly expensive. They're not like uh, uh, a Shopify, which is trading over, you know, way over 15 times sales up here, uh, or Viva Systems, which is software uh, for the healthcare industry, medical IT, uh, specifically for pharma and biotech. Um, they, they create platforms for software and uh, pharma and biotech to use. And that's, I just sold Viva Systems uh, for a, a small profit recently. We had a nice run this year. But that stock is trading 20 times sales. So you can, you know, the so investors are still piling into some of these key software franchises that they see as as being leaders. And Viva is definitely a leader in the healthcare IT space. Uh, so that's why investors will pay 20 times for it. We'll see. I think they report. I think Viva reports earnings tonight or tomorrow. Um, and we'll see if, you know, the stock breaks out above 145 or, you know, if there's another pause here. All right, so we talked about Zwara, Wix, Team, Work. Uh, who else do we want to talk about here? Oh, this is, oh, if you want to learn more, this is good. Okay, so if you want, take a look at my screen here. If you want to learn more about SaaS finance, this is a great article on ProfitWell, and ProfitWell should actually is a private company and is actually a competitor for Zuora because they help companies build a subscription based model uh, but companies have to know what's the difference between bookings revenue and collections and MRR is uh, monthly recurring revenue ARR is annual recurring revenue so great article here that that breaks it all down uh, bookings revenue and collections so you can understand a business like Wix or any model that uh, a SaaS company is trying to build, and, and Zuora might be helping them. All right, I think I covered just about everything I wanted to talk about. So um, definitely learn more about software. You know, I've been I've been dragging uh, my followers through the minefields of biotech for many years, um, and biotech is a whole lot harder than this. You know, biotech. You know, if you don't have a degree in molecular biology, you're struggling with biotech to really understand uh, the prospects for a company. Software is much easier. So grab, uh, you know, look at these companies, look at their investor presentations, uh, look at their financials, look at the growth rates, you know, trying to understand the business model and, you know, see if it could be a long-term investment for you. I think Zuora is a long-term investment. I think Wix probably is a good long-term investment, and probably uh, Atlassian, too. Um, I just want to get them uh, a little cheaper if I can. Um, who else did I talk about? Well, 
uh, you know, there's companies like Workday specializing in the HR aspects of, you know, software as a service uh, or offering a probably a platform as a service. Uh, and then Viva Systems. Viva Systems for healthcare IT is probably platform and infrastructure for what they do for big pharma and biotech. All right, keep digging into software. Lots to learn, lots of money to be made. Talk to you next time.